Good day, brothers and sisters. It's uh, another wonderful moment that uh, we meet to study the uh, Word of God. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, you have been blessed by the presentation so far. Uh, we said that, uh, and uh, when I started the presentations, I said that I have nothing against the author of uh, the pamphlet that is going to be used in the CAM meeting, that is being used in the CAM meeting. The CAM meetings are going on in Kenya. And uh, we are here to study the truth and uh, know what um, the Word of God says and be able to expose the errors which are involved. This is a booklet which uh, is going to be used officially uh, with the church and it's being used officially with the church in the CAM meeting to speak the truth about God. This is the document that is being used officially to prove that uh, God is a trinity. And so. This is the CAM meeting Bible study lesson 2019. The document is authored by uh, Pastor Jeremy Mwenda Marambi of Central Kenya's conference to be used in the CAM meeting for the Bible study on truth about God. And uh, 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 the topic is the attack on the doctrine of the Godhead mm, and uh, what he means there that uh, we have three gods, which are uh, a three-one God. And uh, so far, we have been able to go through day one, day two, and now we are in day three. And uh, I want us to look at um, the objections he gave on day three. And day three, he is dealing with the two most important things he's dealing with on day three. He is dealing with the, the intercessor. He says that because uh, the Holy Spirit is intercessor, then the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. And then he goes ahead and makes this statement, uh, which I'll read after uh, prayers. And so I want us to pray and uh, we start the presentation of today. Uh, let us pray. Uh, our Heavenly Father, we want just to thank you for this evening. We want to thank you for thy loving kindness. And uh, Lord, as we go through this, may you help us even the tone and the words that will be used may not be words that condemn anyone, will not be words that, um, Lord, are devilish, but words that will bring comfort unto the hearts of thy children. May we reduce as Jesus Christ continue increasing in our lives. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I, I want to look at uh, this theme that uh, because the Holy Spirit is an intercessor, he is God. And uh, we will be doing a covering. Uh, and then I'll split day two into day three into two parts. Today I'm going to deal with um, the Holy Spirit as an intercessor. Uh, and the, he says that this proves that uh, the Holy Spirit is God. And then he says that uh, uh, these men who are rejecting the Holy Spirit, actually who doesn't accept that the Holy Spirit is God, then they are actually uh, promoting Babylonian doctrine. So I'll be dealing today with the Holy Spirit as an intercessor. And then tomorrow I'll be dealing with the doctrine of Babylon really does Rejecting that the Holy Spirit is not another God, a doctrine of Babylon, or is believing um, uh, the Holy Spirit is God, is the doctrine of Babylon. I'll be looking into that tomorrow, and it will be uh, two sessions of that, uh, dealing with the, the doctrines of Babylon. Is it rejecting the Holy Spirit? Is God the Holy Spirit? Is, is it Babylonian? Or is it accepting that the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, Babylonian? We shall be seeing that tomorrow in two parts. And then we shall be uh, going to 
uh, day four, which deals with the uh, uh, day four, which deals with the the only power to overcome sin, uh, the only power to overcome sin. Uh, let me look uh, at this. Uh, day, day four, day four deals with the uh, yes. Day four deals with the apostasy of uh, Dudley Canwright, and so I'll be looking into it. Uh, somehow, and then day five is what is dealing with the the only power to overcome sin. And so, uh, let us deal with the day three, part one. The Holy Spirit is God because He is an intercessor. He says that you become the follower of Satan who hates the three persons and gods, especially against the Holy Spirit. So He is speaking about three persons and gods, and three gods. And he's talking about uh, you become a follower of Satan if you reject that the Holy Spirit is God. And why? Because he guides and instructs the believer to live a righteous life from sin. And uh, you live a powerless life because the power of the Holy Spirit is not in your life. And, but, and he goes ahead and said, The bullish attack against the Holy Spirit itself is being made by men who profess to be God's servant and ministers among the followers of God. These men may appear as the ministers of righteousness yes they are yet they are voicing the spiritualistic babylonian doctrines of the devil that one i'll deal with it tomorrow the section i want to deal with is this by the refusal to recognize the holy spirit as the third distinct living holy being divine person and god of the godhead thus believing that he doesn't exist they are denying him insulting him grieving him doing despite to him and rejecting him. And Christ commands us not to do this or else we run the risk of committing the unpardonable sin. Uh, unpardonable sin is the sin of rejecting the truth, persistently rejecting the truth. The Bible reveals that the Holy Spirit is a person, not an impersonal force. Holy Spirit has a personality. No one argues that. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment. How about when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear speak. That is okay. He teaches for, for he teaches, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour that you ought to say. He convicts, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and of judgment. Then he says he directs church affairs as they minister to the Lord. And first, the Holy Ghost said, separate Barnabas. That one I dealt with it yesterday. And then this is the part that I want to deal with because the other things we have covered on day three, he helps to intercede. He says that because the Holy Spirit helps to intercede, then he is God, the Holy Spirit. And which verse does he quote? Romans chapter 8, verse 26. So let us look. When the Bible says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, does that make him God or actually who is interceding with us? This is the portion I want to deal with on day three because the other portions, the other things that he comes up with, we have dealt with them in day one and day two. So day three, it has two important things, intercessor and the doctrines of Babylon. And I want to deal with the intercessor, then I'll come to the uh, tomorrow on the doctrines of Babylon. So let us read the book of uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 26. He says that because the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, then he is God, the Holy Spirit. So let us look at this. The book of Romans chapter 8, verses 26. Romans, sorry for that. Romans 8, verses 26. And uh, I'll put it on your screen so that uh, we may be able to share together. This is um, Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So he says that uh, because the Holy Spirit actually does intercession, then the Holy Spirit is God. We want to see actually when, who actually who maketh in the session. And uh, I'll be running through uh, some important things in this presentation. 
I'll be running through some important things through this presentation. So uh, let us deal with Romans 8.26. Who is our mediator? Who is this interceding? Is it God, the Holy Spirit? This is what, this is our burden today in response to what has been put outside there, that because the Holy Spirit is an intercessor, then he is God, the Holy Spirit. So let us jump into this and delve into it. The only mediator in our history, in our life, who is it? Yes, the Holy Spirit intercedes, but let us look at it closely when it says the Holy Spirit intercedes. What is it talking about? So we ask ourselves in verse 26 of Romans chapter 8, what or who intercedes? Um, uh, if you are writing down this and if you are writing somewhere and you have the Bible, let us go to 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 5. We have been told that the Holy Spirit is an intercessor, an intercessor, a mediator, so he is God the Holy Spirit. But let us look at the totality of the Bible, what it says. Who is our mediator? Who is this Holy Spirit who is mediating for us? What is it or who is it? 1 Timothy 2.5, 1 Timothy 2.5. And I want you to tie all these things that we are going to speak with Romans 8.26, who is our intercessor. 1 Timothy 2.5 says there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. So if you read in the Bible there is one mediator, one intercessor between man, God and man, the man Jesus Christ, and you read in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26 that the Holy Spirit intercedes uh, for us, you should actually start trying to understand Actually, what does these verses mean? Continued on. Uh, Galatians chapter 3, verses 20. Now a mediator is not of one, but God is one. A mediator is between two, a go-between, a bridge. So there is only one mediator between God and man. Galatians 3, 20. And uh, in John chapter 14, verses 6, we found we are dealing with who is this intercessor, who is this mediator. And Christ in John chapter 14, verse 6 says that uh, no one comes, no man cometh to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse, verse 6. So Romans 8, 26 says that uh, the Holy Spirit helps us in intercession. First Timothy says that the only mediator between God and man is Jesus Christ. And John chapter 14 verse 6 says that uh, no man cometh to the Father but by me. And so how is the Holy Spirit coming in this whole perspective that the Holy Spirit is an intercessor? We shall look at these things in depth. And so to say that uh, the Holy Spirit intercedes and so the Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, while you have not looked at the totality of the verses, then it means that you are choosing between and you, you, you are segregating the Bible into some sections and you don't want to read together. We are told in Review and Herald, April 3, 1894, Jesus could give alone security to God for he was equal with God. He alone could be a mediator, an intercessor between God and man for he possessed divinity, and humanity. So the Bible and the spirit of prophecy is saying that the only mediator, the only intercessor is Jesus Christ. Continued on. This is letter 35, 1894. We are looking at the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 26, where uh, the beloved brother, Pastor Marambi, says that because the Holy Spirit intercedes, then we have God the Holy Spirit. But we are looking at the evidence the totality of the evidence, who is our intercessor, and then we shall come to know how the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Letter 35, 1894, it says, His nail-pierced hands are outreached toward heaven and earth. With one hand he lays hold of sinners upon the earth, and with the other he grasps the throne of the infinite, and thus he makes reconciliation for us, that is mediation or intercessory. And uh, with one hand he lays hold of sinners upon earth, and with the other he grabs the throne of the infinite. 
Letter 35, 18, 94 says, Christ is today standing as our advocate before the Father. He is the one mediator, the one intercessor between God and man. So I, I, I'm reading these verses, I'm reading this quote so that you may come to a point, you may understand when Romans 8, 26 says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. What does this actually mean? Uh, Review and Herald, December 22, 1891. As God's ambassador, he must partake of the divine nature, have a connection with the infinite in order to manifest God to the world and be a mediator between God and man. Between God and man. Uh, the Bible echo may... 1 1899 the bible echo may 1 1899 says men have only one advocate one intercessor who is able to pardon transgression shall not our hearts swell with gratitude to him who gave jesus to be the propitiation for our sins so over and over there is only one advocate one intercessor signs of the times march 14 1895 I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me, but I found none. I found none because Christ had left the uh, most holy place. The Lord Jesus was the only one gap who could make up the gap and restore the hedge of the law of God. Signs of the Times, March 14, 1895. Don't lose us. We are talking about Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Uh, the beloved brother says that uh, he teaches, this is the truth, he teaches in the camp that this is the circular that he has uh, uh, spread out in the camps that uh, because Romans 8.26 says the spirit intercedes for us, then the spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. But I'm looking at the totality of the evidence both given in the Bible and given in the spirit of prophecy. Who is the intercessor? Who is the mediator between man and God. Uh, Isaiah chapter 59 verses 16, he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. This is talking about Jesus Christ. When you look at Ephesians chapter 2 verses 18, Ephesians chapter 2 verses 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. The Holy Spirit, which he shed on us through Jesus Christ, Titus 3, verse 5 and 6. So you find that uh, it is the spirit of that one intercessor that is in our hearts leading us to be reconciled with heaven. It is the spirit of the one who is an intercessor. Christ is interceding in heaven. And he gives us the Holy Spirit to convict us so that we may confess our sins so that he may be able to forgive our sins. And uh, we shall see this as we go through uh, others. And so uh, it is through him, it is through Jesus Christ where we have access to the Father. God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, Galatians 4, 6. And so the one who is interceding, has sent his spirit in our hearts. Desire of Ages, page 166. Now, look, this is more, uh, this brings out the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 26, clearly. It says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And then we are finding that the only intercessor is Jesus Christ. So is the Bible contradicting itself? Is the spirit of prophecy contradicting itself? No. We are finding that the intercessor is Jesus Christ, and then he gives the Holy Spirit. Now listen to what Desire of Ages, page 166, says. While Jesus ministers in the sanctuary above, he is still by his spirit the minister of the church on earth. So Jesus is ministering in the heavens above, and on earth he ministers by what? By his spirit. He is withdrawn from the eye of sin, but his parting promise is fulfilled. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so Jesus is in heaven 
literally he is in heaven and then on earth he is there by the holy spirit his omnipresence yes and so while he is in heaven uh signs of the times october 3 1892 while jesus our intercessor pleads for us in heaven the holy spirit works in us to will and to do of his own pleasure and you know where this verse comes from Philippians chapter 2 let us look at the book of Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 Philippians chapter 2 and this is verses 12 and 13 is it Yes, Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Thank you, brother. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and what? Trembling. For it is who? God who does what? Worketh in you both to will and to do of his what? Good pleasure. So, signs of the time, you can put besides your Bible, signs of the time, October 3, 1892, quoting this verse, signs of the times, ST, October 3, 1892. It says, while Jesus, our intercessor, pleads for us in heaven, the Holy Spirit works in us to will and to do of his own good pleasure. So Christ's spirit is the one working to will and to do of God's pleasure on earth. And so we are founding that the, inter the Holy Spirit intercedes in the sense that Christ is in heaven, but he has been, the Holy Spirit has been sent in our hearts. And uh, in heaven, the man, Christ Jesus mediator, Christ humanity represents man to God on earth, Christ divinity represents God man this is the ladder that in heaven christ is there as a god man and so humanity is represented in the heavenly courts above and here on earth divinity now unites with the god uh, above in heaven continued on in heavenly places page 77 paragraph 4 Christ is the connecting link between God and man. Christ has become the medium of prayer between man and God. He also has become the medium of blessing between God and man. Continued on, letter, letter to Miss Wessel, letter 124, March 7, 1897. It says, if you will respond without delay to the knocking of, at the door of your heart, come in, Lord Jesus, that I may sup with thee and thee with me, the heavenly guest will enter. When his element, when this element, which is all divines, abide with you, there is peace and rest. When this element, which is all divine, abides with you, there is peace and rest. And what is this element that comes from Christ to us? It is called the heavenly guest and it is called the Holy Spirit. The only channel of communication Review and Herald, November 28, 1893. And why am, am I going into details of reading in the spirit of prophecy? Because the pastor said in day two that we have cast away the spirit of we have cast away the spirit of prophecy. So I'm doing a lot of reading in the spirit of prophecy so that we may understand actually what the spirit of prophecy says. Uh, the, the pastor said that um, the Holy, the, the, the spirit of prophecy affirms that uh, we have the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, who is a God. Uh, I, I have not, I have not found such a quote that that the third person of the Godhead is the Holy Spirit, who is a God. I haven't found that statement. The only thing that is found there is the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead, but the Spirit of prophecy doesn't say that the third person of the Godhead is the Holy Spirit. He is a God. And so he said that we have cast aside the spirit of prophecy. And that's why I'm reading from the spirit of prophecy. And I said we shall not speak of our own words, but what the Bible says and what the spirit of prophecy says. So the issue we are dealing with right now, 
is day three of the presentation of the subject, the attack on the Godhead, which the Central Kenya Conference has put outside there to be used in all come meetings uh, to be the official teaching of the Seventh day Adventist Church and as the truth about God. And what does that document say? That we have three gods God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the issue today in day three is that he says, Romans 8.26 says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And so because the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, then he is God the Holy Spirit. And so we are looking, who is the only mediator? Who is the only intercessor between man and God? Review and Herald, November 28, 1893. After the transgression of Adam, the Lord spoke no longer directly to man. The human race was given into the hands of Christ, and all communications came through him to the world. And so there is no other communication between man and God except through Jesus Christ. All communication uh, through Christ uh, since the fall of man. Through Christ alone will the Lord hold communication with man, and he's the only channel. And uh, looking at Review and Herald, November 11, 1890. Across the gulf that sin has made come his words. I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is but one mediator between God and man. In heaven, this great truth was announced. So this is the greatest truth that has been ever announced in heaven. There is one, there is but one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. So if this is the greatest truth to be ever announced, that there is one mediator, how is it that the Holy Spirit is spoken in Romans 8.26 as a mediator, as an intercessor? We are trying to establish this thing. We have only one channel of approach to God. Our prayers can come to him through one name only, that of the Lord Jesus, our advocate. His spirit must inspire our petitions. And this is what we are saying, that Christ is the only mediator. Christ is the only channel. Christ is the only intercessor. And his spirit leads in our hearts, inspires the words that we speak, Abba, Father. And that's why Galatians 4, 6 says that uh, because you are sons, God has sent His the spirit of his son in our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And he says in Romans chapter 8, verses 11, going through verses 15, that um, uh, uh, we have not been given the spirit of fear, but we have been given the spirit of we have not been given the spirit of bondage and fear, but we have been given the spirit of God which cried in our heart, Abba, Father. So we find that the intercessor in heaven, and this brings to my remembrance that cumbered, cumbered with humanity, Christ could not be in every place. So it was expedient that he go away that he may send his own spirit to represent him everywhere. So Christ is in heaven literally but he is omnipresent by his spirit, and that spirit is the spirit of intercession. Looking at uh, 14 MR, page 84, and this is written in January 2nd, 1894. It says, The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Christ, which is sent to all men to give them sufficiency that through his grace we might be complete in him. The, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of Christ. It is his representatives. And then it says that uh, uh, when Christ is going away, in John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, he says that um, uh, I'll send you another comforter to be with you. And then 8 MR, page 4, page 57, written in July 16, 1892, says that Christ comes as a comforter to all who believe. Christ comes as a comforter to all who believe. HMR page 49, July 16, 1892. The Savior is our comforter. This I have proved him to be. Amen? Yes. And uh, 19 MR, that is number 1405, Preston, Melbourne, July 26. As faith, as by faith we look to Jesus, 
Our faith pierces the shadow and we adore God for his wondrous love in giving Jesus the comforter. In giving Jesus Christ the comforter. When you read about this, that um, God has given Jesus Christ as the comforter, what comes in your mind? The book of Acts chapter 3. Look at the book of Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. I, I, I believe that now you are starting to see who is this intercessor? Whose spirit is it? When he says that Jesus, God has sent Jesus Christ as the comforter, Acts chapter 3. Are we in Acts chapter 3? Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes, let us look at these things and examine if they be so. Acts chapter 3, verses uh, 19 downwards. Are we there? Yes. Repent ye therefore, and be what? That your sins may be done what? When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of what? The Lord, verse 20 together, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before preached on. And the quote says that God has sent Jesus Christ to us as the comforter. That's what the Bible says. Is it confirmed in the spirit of prophecy? Yes, it is confirmed. That's what it strengthens what is there. And so God has sent Jesus Christ. As a comforter. The Bible says that uh, God has will send Jesus Christ or has sent Jesus Christ. And so this comforter, this intercessor in our hearts is the spirit of God, the spirit of his son. Let them study the 17th chapter of John and learn how to pray and how to live the prayer of Christ. He is the comforter. He will abide in their hearts, making their joy full. And uh, the famous verse we started with, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5. There is one God and one mediator between my God and men, the man Jesus Christ. He is the one that is abiding in us. By his word, he abides in us. When you read John chapter 15, verse 4, he says, Abide in me and I in you. John 15, 7, he continues to say, You abide in me and my words in you. So it is Christ abiding in in us and indicting in, in our prayers so that uh, we may know even what to confess, we may know when to confess, and uh, we may be uh, linked with heaven. In Philippians chapter 2, it says that it is God which worketh in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. We are looking at the only mediator. Does it prove that Romans 8.26, the Spirit is God the Holy Spirit? You look at Matthew chapter 10, verses 20. Matthew chapter 10, verses 20 says, For it is not you that does what speaks, but who speaks? The spirit of your Father, which is in you. First Corinthians 3.16 says that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of God. So over and over we are finding that the spirit of intercession, the spirit of Jesus Christ is the one dwelling in us. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Know ye not, you are, know ye not, you are, your own self have that Jesus Christ is in you. So it is Christ in us. Ephesians 3, 16, 17. Strengthen with the might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You are also builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So it is the Spirit of God working in us to will and to do. Ephesians 4, 6 says that one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And uh, we looked at these verses. I'll pass some of them. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 13 and 14. Let us go to Ezekiel chapter 37, 13, and 14. Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 13 and 14. 
Thus said the Lord God, because they say unto you, Thou land devoureth up men and hast bereaved no. Ezekiel 37, sorry. And you shall know, 37, 13, and 14. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put what? My spirit in? In you. And you shall do what? And I shall place you in your own land, then ye, sh ye shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Are you seeing that verse? Can you give me another verse for that? That 6.26, a new heart also I'll give you, and a new spirit will I put where? Within you, and I'll take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I'll give you a new, a heart of flesh. But I want you to read this one again, once again. Look here, Brother Weekly. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I have done what? Opened your graves, and what? Oh, my people, and brought you up out of your... Yeah. I want you to give me another verse for that. No, no, no. Let me give you a helpful hint in the New Testament. No, 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 no. In the synoptic Gospels. John? Five. John 5. Let us go there. So, so wonderful. You, you tie the two together. My sister, I, I, I'll forgive you for this because this is a presentation, but uh, welcome aboard. <laughs> it says in 37, uh, 13, Ezekiel, and you can put together, you can tie this together. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and all my people and brought you up of your grave. And how shall he awake us? He shall put... My spirit in you and you shall live. So, for us to come out of our graves, what shall be put in us? God's spirit, is, it shall be given unto us. And now go to John chapter 5, verses, the verse that you are giving now. John chapter 5. Are you there in verse 24 and 25, is it? Or is it before that? 27 and 28. Let us look at it. There... For as the Father hath life in himself, so he hath given me, he has given to the Son to have life in. Now, I, I want you to backtrack a little bit. That uh, a time is coming. Yes, you are right. Let us go ahead, is it? Verses 28 says, Marvel not as at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall do what? Hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. For, for us to come out of the graves, he puts his spirit in us. So it is the spirit of Christ. I found that so beautiful and so the spirit of truth dwelleth with you and shall be in you i'll not leave you comfortless jesus christ says uh, uh reflecting christ page 129 paragraph 2 that christ should manifest himself to them and yet be invisible to the world was a mystery to the disciples they could not understand the words of christ in the spiritual sense they were thinking of the outward visible manifestation. They could not take in the fact that they could have the presence of Christ with them and yet be unseen by the world. They did not understand the meaning of spiritual manifestation. We are looking at the only mediator between man and God. And uh, it is not essential to just define what the Spirit is. We are told that he shall 
he, is, he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. This refers to the omnipresence of the Spirit of Christ when you read 14 MR 179.2. The only power to resist evil, we shall be looking at the only power to resist evil on Friday. And so I'll skip on. And we are looking at the only mediator. Who is this only mediator? Because we are being told in Romans 8.26 that because the Holy Spirit intercedes, then he is God, the Holy Spirit. But this, these are suppositions. We are finding that the one who is doing intercession in our hearts is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. As our intercessor, his office work is to introduce us to God. This is 60, 363. Quoting Romans chapter 8, verse 26, that the Holy Spirit does what? Intercedes for us. Now you can put this in Romans 8, 26. Speaking, commending on this, he says, as our intercessor, his office work is to introduce us to God. As his sons and daughters, Christ intercedes in behalf of those who have received him. And so the office of the spirit of Christ is to introduce us to God. How does he do that? How be it when he cometh? He shall convict you of what? Sin, of judgment and righteousness. Because I go to who? I go to the Father. And so the work of the Holy Spirit as in an intercessor is to introduce us to God. Now, you are looking at me. You are wondering how, how this introduction is done. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin and it leads you to the only person who can give you, who can forgive you the sin. So he convicts the heart. And how does he do that? Through the word. Look at the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Yeah? 63, 63. 60, page 363. Look at John chapter 14. It says that, 60 says that the intercessor introduces us to God. And we know that the Holy Spirit convicts and then it leads us to confess to Jesus Christ who is able to take away our sin. Is it? That is the introduction that we are seeing here. John chapter 14. Look at what it says. Verses um, 23. First of all, read 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I love him, and will do what? Manifest myself to him. Is it? You that saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will do what? Keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our board with him. So this is the word of God convicting and introducing us to the father and the son by their spirit. The words that I speak unto you are what? Spirit and, and life. And so the Holy Spirit introduces us to God. Romans 8, 26. It intercedes. When it says that it intercedes with groanings, which we cannot utter, it, 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 the spirit of prophecy says that it introduces us to God. Uh, and uh, he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for transgression. That is, Isaiah 53, verses 12 says that Christ poured out his soul, and he maketh intercession for us. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to do what? To make intercession for them. Now, Desire of Ages 667. Ever, every sincere prayer is heard in heaven. 
It may not be fluently expressed, but if the heart is in it, it will ascend to the sanctuary where Jesus ministers, and he will present it to the Father without one awkward stammering one. Beautifully and fragrant with the incense of his own what? Perfection. Now, look at the book of Romans again. Look at the book of Romans. We are in the book of Romans chapter 8. Who is this intercessor? Romans chapter 8. Verses 26 is where actually uh, we are. Verses 26. Are we there? Likewise, the Spirit also help, helps our infirmities, for we know not what, what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh what intercession for us with groanings which we cannot, which cannot be done what? Uttered. We know not the words. Now listen carefully. We know not the words. And how we ought to pray. And then desire of ages ties in like this says. But if the heart is in it in the prayer it will ascend to the sanctuary where Jesus ministers. He will present it to the Father without one awkward stammering word. So we know not how to pray, is it? Yet when we pray, and with this stammering lips, who actually gives to God the words without stammering? Christ himself. And so it says that the Spirit actually guides us even in the words to pray. So it is Christ who guides us in uh, our prayers. His Spirit guides us in our prayers. The Spirit also makes intercession for us with groans that cannot be uttered. Christ is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us, and he gives out the words uh, without any stammering word. And so I I'll just give you verses in uh, speedily. In, when you read Daniel chapter 12, verses 1, it is Michael who stands for his people. In Isaiah chapter 53, verses 12, Jesus makes intercessions. In Hebrews 7, 25, Jesus liveth to make intercession. In Hebrews 12, 24, Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. And in 1 John chapter 2, Jesus is our paracletos, our advocate. There is no middleman that comes between the sinner and Christ. Signs of the time, June 28, 1899. There is no middle man that comes between the sinner and Christ. Now, this is wonderful. There is no what? It doesn't even say between Christ and God, by the way. Sign ST, June 28, verses 8. ST, June 28, the year 1899. There is no middle man that comes between the sinner and Christ. So if there is no middle man, who is this Holy Spirit? If there is no middle man, then it means that it is the omnipresence of he himself. Christ himself. Yes, divested of uh, humanity, stripped of humanity. And then we have Christ between God and man. But there is no man between, or there is no one else between man and Christ. And between man and God, it is only Christ. You see that? And so, uh, continued on. He liveth to make intercession. Christ liveth to make intercession. And uh, I'll skip over some things. And uh, Christ has given his spirit as a divine power to overcome all hereditary and cultivated tendencies to evil and to impress his own character upon his charge. There is no comforter like Christ so tender and so true. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. His spirit speaks to our hearts. Amen. 
Because there is a lot, a host of verses that says that the Spirit speaks, is it? The Spirit speaks, the Spirit knows our mind. His grief. And so we are being told there is no comforter like Christ, so tender and so true. He's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. His Spirit speaks to our hearts. So when you read in the Bible that the Spirit speaks, whose Spirit is speaking? The Spirit of God. When you read that the Spirit is grieved, as it is in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30, who is being grieved? God himself, and even let us read the book of Isaiah chapter 63. Let us look at Isaiah chapter 63, talking about the Spirit being grieved. Isaiah chapter 63, verses 9, if I'm not wrong. Isaiah chapter 63, verses 9. Are we there? Amen. In their what? He was done what? And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity he redeemed them. And he bare them and carried them all the days of all. Verse 10 together. But they did what? They rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Whose spirit? The spirit of God. And so when it says that the spirit is grieved, the spirit speaks. It is the spirit of God in our hearts, which is shared to us through his son. And now, this is beautiful. I, I want you to see this and tie this with the, the book of John, chapter 14. Let us go to, let us go first of all to the book of John, chapter 14. Verses 18. What does it say? I will not leave you comfortless. I'll do what? I'll come to you. Now, this is beautiful. You can write there if there is still space. I know you have written in your Bibles until there is no space. And my sister, you must have a new Bible by tomorrow in the evening. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Good. 14, 18, I'll not leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. This is RH, April 30, 1901. RH, April 30, 1901. Do you want to know what it says? He is coming to us by his Holy Spirit today. Let us recognize him now. Then we shall recognize him when he comes in the clouds of heaven with power and the great glory. Mm -hmm. So Christ, when he ascended, he will come twice. Or let us say, before he will come thrice. In this way, he will come as the Holy Spirit, because the quote says he's coming to us by his Holy Spirit today. Let us recognize him now, then we shall recognize him when he comes in the clouds of heaven. How shall we be able to recognize it is him? The Spirit will reveal to us, you, you know, before Christ comes, Satan tries to personate Christ, is it? How will, and it says that if it were possible, he will deceive who? The very elect. So how shall we know that this is an imposter and this is the true one? The Spirit of Christ in us will be able to reveal that that is not Satan, this is, that is not Satan, but it is Jesus Christ. So he is coming to us by his Holy Spirit today. Let us recognize him. Now, for the people who understand English, it says that let us recognize him now, then we shall be able to recognize him when he comes in the club. Can somebody shed light on this? How do you understand the word then in conjunction with the statement before? Let us recognize him now, then. Now, I want to see people who are really going to school and were in class. They were not waiting for lunch bells to ring. Let us recognize him now, then. 
And I have, I have just given you an answer. Now, spirit is working. Um, yes. The spirit uh, guides what we do. The fruits of the spirit, fruits God gave me to me. Sister, I see you are you are searching your mind. Yes, uh, brother Ray. The Holy Spirit now, present and future. <laughs> let us let us tie this with First John. Look at First John. Behold what man of love the Lord has done what? Bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of what? Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but when, but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. So, the glory of God. Christ says that, glorify me with the glory I had with you since the beginning. Is it? And he goes ahead and says that the glory you have given unto me, I have done what? I have given unto them. Is it? Which is the Holy Spirit. And so when he appears, we are like him. And that's why we know him. So we should recognize him now that he may do the work in us so that then we may be like him when he appears and we are not destroyed by the brightness of his coming. And so that is something powerful that uh, I find in First John 3, uh, 1 John 3, 2, 1 John 3, 2, and uh, let me see if this one is good for us. The book of uh, so uh, we are looking at the mediator. Who is this mediator in Romans chapter eight, verse twenty-six? And we are seeing that it is the Spirit of Christ which is helping us. Uh, to know of our shortcomings and help us to pray. Uh, for the Father giveth the Holy Spirit to those who ask Luke 11 verse 13. In giving us his spirit, God gives us himself, making himself a fountain of divine influences, uh, divine influence. And so, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 and 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 and 11, God hath revealed unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searcheth all things here, the deep things of God. And uh, when you go to Romans chapter 8, verse 26, because that is where everything is revolving around, it says, look at Romans 8, 26 and 27. Because what we have been told is that the spirit is God, the Holy Spirit, because it intercedes for us and searches our minds, is it? And that proves that he is God. And we are looking into this thing deeply. How is the Spirit able to intercede for us? Who is this Holy Spirit? Whose Spirit is it? It says, 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11 says, God hath revealed unto us by his Spirit. Okay? For the Spirit, the Spirit of who? Searcheth all things here, the deep things of who? Of God. Now go to Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth uh, our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning which we cannot be uttered. Verse 27. And he does what? And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of who? Now, who in First Corinthians searcheth all things? 
the Spirit of God. So, who liveth to make an intercession for us? It is the Spirit of God which is shared to us through Christ. And when it comes to us, it comes to us with the victory of Jesus Christ in its fullness, in the fullness of the divinity and in the fullness of the humanity. You know that? There's a verse, check for me a verse in John says that the spirit has not been given. John chapter 8 or John chapter 5? For the spirit had not been given. Chapter 7? Let us go there. Now, verses 39, let us look there. But this speak he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet. Why did we have the Spirit in the days of Jesus Christ? Yes, why, why, why is the verse saying that uh, the Holy Spirit had not been given? Bible students. No breakfast tomorrow if there's no answering this question. You know that. Are we together? Do we believe that the Spirit was there during the time of Jesus Christ? How do you know that the Spirit was there? When he sent the 70 away, in whose power did they do the works? The power of the Holy Spirit, is it? So the Spirit was there when Jesus was there. But verse, uh, the book of John, chapter 7, verses 39 says that the Spirit had not, uh, uh, but this speak of the Spirit which they, but this speak he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Which kind of Holy Ghost was not yet given at this point? Divinity and humanity glorified, is it? You can put there in uh, the book of John, chapter 8, verses 39, ST. If you haven't put it there, ST. May 17, 18, 99, paragraph 3. The spirit had not been given, this, that spirit of intercession, that spirit of reconciliation. And uh, we are reading from ST, May 17, 1899, paragraph 3. It says, commending on the spirit had not yet given, okay? This is what it says. During his humiliation upon the, this earth, the spirit had not descended with its full efficacy. And Christ declared that if he went not away, it will not come, but that if he went away, he will send it. It was a representation of himself after he was glorified, it was manifest. Yes. So, the Holy Spirit which is sent after Christ have gone to heaven is the manifestation of the glory of Christ. And what is the glory of Christ? The victory over sin. That is the glorification of Jesus Christ. Humanity combined with divinity. So after he overcame sin, now that glory is manifested. How is it manifested? I'm looking for certain words, particular thing. 
Christ is manifested after his glorification. Now, understand this. It is the humanity combined with divinity, okay? The glorification of Jesus Christ that comes to us, okay? And it is manifested. How is it manifested? Can you complete your statement? Because it's not complete. By overcoming sin. You are so shy in saying what you believe. Uh, and so that glory in the person of the third person of the Godhead, the distinct personality, is manifested in us. And how is it manifested? By us overcoming sin. That is how Christ is glorified, manifested in us. That is how we know that we have the third person of the Godhead. Divinity combined with humanity. If you want to know that you have it, it's the victory over sin living in you. Yes. Is the very life of Christ or the divinity of Christ combined with our humanity overcome sin? The divinity combined with humanity is this the Father sheds the Spirit through the Son, okay? And when it comes, it have, Christ has humanity, okay? But humanity that overcame sin, okay? So divinity is intrinsically blended with humanity. In Christ. Yes, in Christ. So when it comes to us, it comes to us. Yes, it is that power now to overcome sin. Because Sin needed a supernatural person who have overcome. To, uh, sin needed a person, a human being, to demonstrate to us that sin can be overcome if you rely on God. Okay? And so Christ came as a human, overcame sin. Okay? And then he goes to the Father. When he goes to the Father, he is the channel. Desire of Ages, page 21, paragraph 2 says that from the great source of all through Christ. The beneficence comes to us, okay? So it is the spirit. When you read Titus chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says that God has shed his spirit to us through the Son. Why through the Son? Why not just give us direct spirit? And I'm not saying that he cannot do that. He can't be able to do that. But why through Christ? He underwent what humanity goes through. He is touched with our infirmities, is it? And so when the Father said, gives him the Holy Spirit, okay? It is com combined with all the humanity, the affections, the sympathies. Because how can he be touched with our infirmities if he never had the infirmities that we have? So these infirmities which have gained victory, okay, it is what comes to us. It is something mysterious. I, I know you are cracking your head about this. But the Father sheds forth the Holy Spirit, is it? And it passes through a channel that has gone through what humanity goes through. So he is a priest. Look at Hebrews chapter 5 to understand what I'm saying. Hebrews chapter 5. I cannot explain all the mysteries here. But Hebrews chapter 5 now sheds light on your question. What actually comes to us? Who in the days of his flesh, verse 7, Hebrews chapter 5. Are we there, amen? Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and he was heard in that he feared, verse 8, though he were a son yet learned he what? Obedience, that is the victory, is it? By these things which he did, he did what? So this obedience of Jesus Christ through him, humanity, okay? His character, and you know character is the spirit? Yeah, it is his spirit. It forms up his spirit. So obedient 
this obedient spirit, this obedient character, okay? Verse 9, what does it say? And being made what? Was he made perfect as a human being or perfect as God? As a human being. And then being made perfect, he became what? The author of eternal salvation. So what makes him the author of eternal salvation? Being made perfect, his victory as a human being, is it? And then now, God uses him as a channel. His spirit is blended with that character. And then we possess the character of Jesus Christ. In fact, there is a quote I have been looking for for many days that says that it's not our, it's not our spirit that goes to heaven. It is the spirit of Christ. But I'll continue looking to it. What does it mean actually it is the spirit of Christ? Galatians 5.26, the fruit of the Spirit. And who makes it possible? Can you reach in the gates of heaven and say that I have done everything that qualifies me to go to heaven? What do you say? Christ in me, the hope of what? His character in me is able to pass me through the pearly gates. So it is his Spirit working in us that makes us have his character. And it is his character that actually passes the pearly gates, not your character. And that's why if you are not in him, you cannot have a character fit to pass the pearly gates. But we can go deeply into this later. We are looking at Romans chapter 8, verse 26, that it is the spirit of God that searches and helps us in inter session in intercession continued on we are just about it then we are learning together john 17 22 says that the glory which thou giveth me i have given them that they may behold my glory which thou giveth given to me for thou loveth me before the foundation of the world and he is praying that O oh god Glorify me with thy own self, with the glory which we had with thee before the world was, which is actually the fullness of him. And uh, <coughs> Jesus is seeking to embrace upon them that the thought that in giving his Holy Spirit, he is giving to them the glory which the Father has given him. So when he gives the Spirit, he gives the glory that the Father has given to him. What is this glory? His Spirit. This is the glory that the Father gave him. That is what he gives unto us. And Second Peter chapter 1, verses 4 says what? Unto us has been given what? Exceeding precious promises that we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this, in this world, and it is last. Okay? So we partake of this divine nature. In Proverbs chapter 1 verses 23 says that I'll pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you. Is there anything that I can squeeze in lastly? Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations. So the comforter, the one interceding for us in 8.26 of Romans, it is the Spirit of God interceding for us, and it is shed through His Son. To wit, God was in Christ doing what? Reconciling man to God. And He has given us what? The word of reconciliation. The Spirit of what? Reconciliation. The same Spirit that was in Christ, He has given to what? To us. And no wonder we are called a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. The work of the priesthood was to do reconciliation. So we have been given that same spirit, but it comes through the Son to us. Reading the last sentiments now, we, we have five slides and then we close this up. And uh, we have been talking about 
Pastor Marambi says that um, Romans 8.26 says that the Spirit intercedes for us, so the Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. It is one of the gods. But we are finding over and over and over again in the inspiration and in the, in the Bible that this Spirit is the Spirit of who? Of God shared to us through who? Christ. And then let us look at this last sentiment, last five slides, starting with 1SM344.1 and 2. It says, Christ, our mediator, and the Holy Spirit are constantly interceding. Now that one throws off you off the cliff, is it? Christ our and the Holy Spirit are constantly doing what? How many? Two. Now that is the spirit of prophecy. But let us continue on because that is where the people stop. They are interceding for us in man's behalf. And look here, what is the most important point of, in the quote? But the Spirit pleads not for us as does Christ, who presents his blood, shed from the foundation of the world. The Spirit works upon our hearts. Yes, if you are looking on your computer, just open 1SM 344, paragraph 1. In paragraph 2, 3SM, 344, I'm sorry, 1SM, 344, 1 and 2, do you have it? Are you there, Christ? Christ, our mediator, and the Holy Spirit are doing what? Constantly interceding in man's behalf. You, Wycliffe, you can look at it also. But the Spirit pleads not for us as does Christ, who presents his blood shed from the foundation of the world. So what does, the, what does Christ present? The blood. The Spirit works upon our hearts, drawing out prayers and penitence, praise and thanksgiving. Do you see the work? The two are doing? But are they the two? While Christ ministers in the sanctuary above, he is the, still the minister of his church on earth by his... And the, we read in the other quote that the Spirit introduces us to who? To God. Have we forgotten that? No, we have not forgotten that. And so, Christ gives the blood and the Spirit works upon our hearts doing out prayers and praising and thanksgiving. The gratitude which flows from our lips is the result of the Spirit striking the chords of soul in holy memories, awakening the music of the heart. The religious services, the prayers, the praise, the penitent, confession of sin are sent from the true believers as incense to the heavenly sanctuary. But passing through the corrupt channels of what? Humanity, they are so defiled that unless purified by blood, they can never be of value with God. They are sent not in spotless purity, and unless the intercessor who is at God's right, so who is at the right God's hand as an intercessor? Christ presents and purifies all by his righteousness. Now you understand divinity combined with humanity. Christ is there and then his spirit is here. Humanity is there and his divinity omnipresence is here with us. Continuing on, they ascend not in spotless purity, and unless the intercessor who is at God's right hand presents and purifies all by his righteousness, it is not acceptable to God. All incense from earthly tabernacle must be moist with the cleansing drops of the blood of who? He holds before the Father the censer of his own maids, in which there is no taint of earthly corruption. He gathers into the censer the prayers, the praise, and the confession of his people, and with this he puts his own spotless righteousness. Then perfumed with the merits of Christ's word, propitiation, the outpouring of himself is what is called the propitiation. The incense comes up before God, holy and entirely acceptable. Then gracious others are returned. Amen. Now you can understand Romans 8.26, how the spirit intercedes and how Christ intercedes. Christ offers his blood, the Spirit 
indicts our prayers. And we have found that it is the Spirit of God that searcheth all hearts. That is, uh, and uh, we, we are the last four slides. That was the last five slides. Now the last four slides. 8MR 195.3. 8MR 195.3. Speaking on Romans 8.26. The Spirit of God has much to do with acceptable prayer. He softens the heart. Have you seen in the previous heart, in the previous quotation what he does? He convicts the heart. And here it says the Spirit of God has much to do with acceptable prayer. He softens, that is 8MR 195.3. 8MR 195.3. It really, this quote goes hand in hand with the previous quote. Because in the previous quote, we find that the Spirit works upon our hearts, drawing out prayers and penance and praise and thanksgiving. Here it says, the Spirit of God has much to do with acceptable prayer. He softens the heart, he enlightens the mind, enabling it to discern its own wants. That is the searching. He quickens our desires, causing us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. He intercedes in behalf of sincere supply. And are you seeing that? So Romans, and you will find that Romans 8.26 has been quoted, is it? Yet it continues, The Spirit also helpeth and our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So in the quote, whose spirit is searching the heart and softening the heart? The spirit of God. This is Bible, this is spirit of prophecy. The pastor accuses the people who believe in the Father and the Son and their spirit to be actually believing in Babylonian doctrines and not believing that the spirit is God the spirit but we are proving it otherwise. There is no comforter like Christ, so tender and so true. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. His spirit speaks to the heart. And we read this. Now, we shall learn, this is MS 24, 1898. We shall learn the value of the human soul when we learn to value the love of God for us. A divine Savior died for, our, for all that all might find in him that divine source. In Christ Jesus we are one, lifted to the same rank, members of the royal family, children of the heavenly king, by the utterance of one name, our Father, through Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave his life a ransom for us. This places an equal value upon all. To the poor and oppressed and downtrodden of earth, Christ says, if you love me, Keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, even the spirit of truth, which is Christ formed within the hope of glory. So the spirit is Christ formed within the hope of what? Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. Second last slide, letter 66, 18, 6, 1894, and this is your favorite. If any of you lack wisdom, this is, this one, Wycliffe loves it so much. If any of, one of you lack what? Wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. The Lord is soon to do what? to come. We want that complete and perfect understanding which the Lord only can do what? Give. It is not safe to catch the spirit from another. Together, we want the Holy Spirit which is Jesus Christ. 
letter 66 1894 how clear can it be last the reasons why the churches are weak and sickly and ready to die is the enemy is that the enemy has brought influences of a discouraging nature to bear upon trembling soul he has sought to shut jesus from their view as what as their comfort so from brothers and sisters reading all these things we found that um, the intercessor is which one the, the last one is uh letter this is that uh, the reason why the church is sickly this is uh, review and herald august 26 rh august 26 189 and so we found that uh, romans 826 is speaking about the spirit of christ the spirit of god which actually indicts our prayers while christ is ministering above he is ministering to his church by his representative the holy spirit i i i i think you can see how actually it is it is uh, so amazing the things that we learn and the things that has been presented as true romans chapter 8 verses 26 doesn't prove that we have god the holy spirit from the evidence we have gathered we have seen that what we have is the spirit of god which indicts our prayers and searches our hearts and guides us on how to pray and uh, while Jesus Christ is actually interceding with his blood his spirit is working in our hearts so that we may not be drawn away by the evil spirit because if the spirit of Christ is not in our heart to guide us in our prayers we shall be possessed by the spirit of satan and we shall not be saved god bless you and god be with you we end this with a word of prayer heavenly father we thank you for your word which is true we thank you for your inspiration which doesn't lie but confirms your word we pray that the truth may come out clearly that the children may be helped in these last days we don't want to catch the spirit from another we want the spirit which is jesus christ to the poor and downtrodden lord we can just desire to have the holy spirit which is christ formed within and so thank you for this evening bless even pastor marambi as he continues in this presentation lord may you convict his holy his uh, uh, spirit of what is the truth that lord he may see that actually what has been presented uh, by him is not the truth lord we are not righteous but we want the righteousness of thy son because our righteousness is filthy rags may you help us may you guide us and may you accept us and may we live to manifest your glory upon this earth for in Jesus name we pray amen god bless you all